Processing zones and structural adjustment programs, but in actuality, it's just the colonizers and the colonized are pretty much the same people that they've been for hundreds of years. Walmart promises low prices, and if you go in there, you'll find they're really low prices for a lot of different things. But what they don't tell you is that while the prices are so low, when it comes to value, that there is a cost, and the cost is not small. The cost is the thousands of workers and sweatshops all over the world and here in the United States who go without soap, without milk, without a roof to cover their heads, without a hope for a better life for their, than their parents, and without education because they're so busy working in a sweatshop for Walmart uh, for 12 hours a day. And what these contracts and conditions end up saying is that they're worth nothing more than 12 hours of labor to these companies. But if you ask Walmart about this, they'll say, that it's someone else's problem. They'll say that they don't they don't know that it's the buyers that it's the manufacturer's problem and not the buyers. They've created a system of intentional ignorance to try, try to deflect responsibility. But we say that whether slave wage jobs are created by the IMF or the World Bank or to stock the shelves of Walmart, then work without dignity, or work without a voice. Work without work, work for the sole benefit of capital and its slave masters is unacceptable. And in saying we're not going to accept it, we're saying that we'll do any, everything in our power to demand that the factory workers who make the products that we buy are treated like human beings. And that, and that this movement will never quit. We'll be here or we'll be somewhere else until corporate America is ready to make some changes. So Walmart's not interested in where their products come from. Because if they truly investigated them, they know what they would find. For example, when it comes to their clothing, the Kathy Lee line, which is made exclusively for Walmart, um, opened the eyes of the world to the conditions behind the label a couple years ago. But very little has actually changed. Walmart is so powerful that they can tell the companies they buy from, that they will not buy products if workers suffer to make them. But they don't. Why don't they? Well, there's a couple of good reasons why they don't. One, they don't change who they buy from because so many customers don't know about the problem. And if they do know, they feel helpless of what they can do about it. And that's why what we're doing here today is so important. Another reason, and the most re important reason I think Walmart doesn't buy from factories where the workers are treated fairly, is because if the workers received fair pay and benefits, the factories would have to charge Walmart more for their products. And this would cut into Walmart's profit margin about this much. But anything that stands in the way of profit margin must be eliminated, including workers' unions and decent wages. Sadly, I think this reflects our culture a little bit. A culture in which your value is determined by how much you accumulate not how much you limit or reduce on the differences between corporate America and its allies and everyday people on the other side. Well, then it, I guess it's up to us to get our vision out there. Our vision for democratic control over our financial institutions, over our local economy, and over the political process. We need to tell governments and companies that some things like basic human dignity don't have a price tag. And we need to be clear about our message to entities like the IMF and World Bank, as well as Walmart and so many other retailers, that they will always be a target for what's wrong with globalization when they continue to fight workers, leaders, and their unions. Please avoid it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ah. Uh. <laughs> 
I have no words to express how honored I am to be with you here. I like to just say a few words in a poem by Scotsman Michael Roberts, which I think can say it better than I can in our time between the rough hills of Gabro and the cold sea, between the factory hooter and the slab nose bullet, fully grows up to its full height, but cannot grow forever. For it is built on pride, on pride and power, and power ends in weariness and duty. Even the hooded eagle cannot fly to heaven. And the leader looks at last towards the people. People asking for home, a plot of earth, a patient, patient in spring, and the sight of foreign merchant. Power is built on fear and empty bellies between the rough hills of Gabro and the cold sea. The Gulf Stream squabbling for a poor harvest. Between the factory hooter and the snub nose was bullet. Under the shadow of guns and corn ripens and folly cannot die. But cannot grow forever. Thank you. Woo! She looks like she's ready to have some fun in this smart outfit. The label will tell you 50% polyester, 50% cotton. But what, is it, what it doesn't tell you is that the workers in Honduras making clothes for Walmart have reported working over 55 hours a week for 46 cents an hour, not being able to take bathroom or water breaks when they need them, having clothes thrown in their face, and being fired when trying to form a union. Let's take a look at Melanie. She's decked out in the Gap's latest in invention. Tommy Hilfiger's latest invention. Sure to end any speculation that she, she may be different than any of her friends in ideas or in wardrobe. Her walk says that she can take on the world, unless she's in a factory where the world is a misery and humiliating working conditions. If she was in the Salvadoran sweatshop, she would be worried about keeping her mouth shut while, impro while improving her to try to improve her job or pay, unless she wants to risk being fired and blacklisted from any other garment job where she lives. <laughs> Here comes Stacy, sporting a new outfit from J.C. Penny. She looks really successful. About as, about as successful as the company who makes those clothes. J.C. Penny's profits are over $500 million, but they still pay their workers in China 11 cents to stitch and sew them. They say that 11 cents goes far in China, but in reality, it's not far enough to even think about the modest hopes for a life out of poverty and indentured servitude. A dictatorship for being in collaboration with the makers of this sporty new sweatshirt and snazzy sneakers. Since 1988, the regime has promoted free speech, has pro prohibited free speech, the freedom of assembly, and the right, right to organize. Independent trade unions are illegal, and the Burmese workers have no rights. They, they have little choice or not to hail the military dictatorship. For, for any up, labor uprisings or efforts to speak out against the dictatorship are crushed. So practical, the perfect wear for any shape or size or chili. But you won't see the woman in El Salvador who slaved over this sweatshirt letting down her guard. These women are fired if they become pregnant, refuse to work overtime, or even suspected of devoted organizing. They fight daily to pay for food, for transportation, child care, and other things for a meager starvation wage of under $5 a day. Rah, rah. Watch out, Regis. Here comes Betty Sue. Here we go, 
it herself. <laughs> Betty Sue totes around more money in her tote right now than the Chinese factory workers who make it earn in a week. Those at the Xinjiang factory take home more than three cents per hour. That's three dollars and ten cents for an entire ninety-eight hour work working week. <laughs> situation is bleak. Men and women and children are forced to live in starvation, work grueling hours in squalid conditions, and have little outlet or opportunity for resistance. Huge transnational corporations spread their capitalist oppression to the far reaches of the earth, but sweatshops also exist right here in the United States and even here in Massachusetts. Factory workers in Los Angeles and New York and others are paid far below the minimum wage and forced to work excruciating long hours. Not to mention workers everywhere in sweatshops who are fired as they tried to form a union. But there's a hope for a better future both here and abroad. Nationwide, student sweatshop movement is continually making breakthroughs with their administration. Right there at the University of Massachusetts, student work, students working hard, hard to get the administration to sign on to the Workers' Rights Consortium. No way to the FLLA. This is a gigantic step in the right direction, but more work is needed.
not just something that happens in, in Indonesia. It's also something that's happening here. It's all not just happening in the, in the marketplace and in the factory. It's also happening in education. It's not just happening in terms of the auxiliary services, the bookstores, the cafeterias, or in the physical plant with the maintenance people. But it's going to happen in the education process itself. If you make less than $60,000 a year, UMass doesn't want you. Down 40% in the last 15 years. If you're African American or Latino, UMass doesn't want you. Down 40% in two years since the collapse of affirmative action. If you manage to get your four year degree somewhere else and you're African American, UMass doesn't want you. Down 51% in the last 26 years, virtually the entire time of affirmative action. If you are a student parent of public assistance, UMass does, does not want you. Down 88% in one year. 805 student parents driven out by the combined force of welfare reform and the committed efforts of administrators who said not one penny shall be spent on anyone coming off welfare. <laughs> but it's also happening in the teaching process itself. Distance learning, information technology, online education, these are the buzzwords for the transformation of higher education to eliminate all who cannot afford to be there and move them to the farthest fringes of the system. Driving people out through high stakes testings like MCAS. Now what is this? What is distance learning? We all remember the matchbook that said if you could read this you could get a college degree? That's distance learning. No more sweatshops! No more sweatshops! No more sweatshops!
There's you guys.